The fact that men and women look different on the outside, like to the naked eye, that's not the whole truth. That's a limited view and how we get the wrong perception when it comes to relationships. The outside is the physical part, our sexuality. The obvious part is on the surface, easily visible. It doesn't take any depth of work or understanding to see the difference. The part that really matters is the unseen part. What makes a man and a woman different isn't whether they have an outsy or an insy. Those physical differences between a man and a woman are the manifestations of the hidden biology. The driving force is underneath the surface, the XX and the XY. That's the reality of the creature. Everything that's hidden away from the naked eye, the soul of this creature is what matters most. The hierarchy in marriage is the part that's easily seen with the naked eye. It's obvious because it's on the surface. The outside of the marriage are the roles of the wife and husband. The roles are the shallow layer. The parts that a three-year-old can look at and tell the difference between a mommy and a daddy. The outside surface roles are what matter the least. And as long as the marriage lives only in the form through surface roles, the part of the iceberg that's exposed, there will be no one flesh relationship that's alive. The largest and most important part of the marriage is the one flesh relationship between masculinity of the man and femininity of the woman. And that's the part that's being created in secret. What femininity needs from masculinity and vice versa cannot be seen with the naked eye because it's a felt experience that happens below the surface. And it works that way for both men and women. It's not reciprocal, which is part of the confusion. Women reciprocate with women one way and men reciprocate with men in another. But when it comes to romantic friendships, we need different things from each other because we are completely opposite creatures. The reason there's so much trouble in relationships is because they're being lived out on the surface instead of being created in the unseen realm. Christendom's teaching about marriage has been so narrow and ignorant about the truth of femininity and masculinity. They've tried to force the part that's alive, the one flesh relationship, to be lived out through the static roles of the husband and wife. Why is that, do you think? For a community of faith that professes to know the creator of the universe and to have the market on truth and reality cornered, why do Christian relationships have the exact same problems as the world that lives in deception and darkness? Why does the divorce rate of supposed Christian marriages almost mirror the world's? because all churches structure themselves like a business within the world. That means that they say they're a Christian organization, but they act and carry on business like any other entity of commerce in the world. Then what happens, because the world is masculine due to the fall, the feminine is not just ignored, but led to believe it's irrelevant. There's no space for femininity. There's only space for accomplishment and serving and making the company more profitable. How that plays out in marriage is routine obligations, functions, and duty. That religious model works for relationally lazy, immature, or dysfunctional sheep, or men that are toxic and dangerous, regardless if they're a goat, a tear, or a wolf. Christendom has morphed churches to reflect the two largest worldly models, the world of commerce and business and public education. Within these two organization, there's a hierarchy structure in order to function. Otherwise there'd be chaos. Jesus Christ didn't establish his new covenant to follow the growth model of a worldly hierarchical structure. But the majority of Christendom operates this way. 
they refer to themselves as a church. But in practical terms, they operate like a business of commerce. Here's the problem. Christian marriages are linked so tightly to their worldly model of church that they only see marriage through the same structure of hierarchy. And it's even referred to as the institution of marriage and the office of husband. This is the problem. A man can look like a man on the surface and sit in the role of a husband, yet not embody any of the masculinity within his testosterone. Soft men are the dangerous ones. On the outside, they appear to be masculine. Some wear a suit and tie, some have tattoos, some shave their heads, some grow beards, some offer to help, levy, help lift heavy things. Whatever their idea of what they think manhood looks like, that's what they project. But on the inside, that hidden part, they live from estrogen. They're not necessarily same sex attracted. This type of man, he just doesn't want to do the work required of masculinity to maintain a one flesh relationship. This kind of man refuses to carry the heavy masculine load. In 1 Corinthians 6, 9, God uses the word malakos. It means effeminate, soft and delicate. He doesn't want to grow up and be a man. He wants to be a little boy living inside an adult male body instead of embracing his God-given identity as a man. He forces the woman in his life to take care of him like a mother, except for she's called his wife. When you only live your marriage through the roles in the hierarchical structure, this allows a man, no, it doesn't just allow a man, it encourages the man to not grow up by forcing the wife to bear the weight of the responsibility that he was created to carry. Is that what God means when he talks about a husband and wife representing Christ and the church? That it's just the things we can see on the surface, on the outside of a person's body, and how they function in their roles? I don't think that's what God means. You see, comparatively, that would be knowing about God and religious activities for God, yet not being in relationship with Him. Christianity teaches that Ephesians 5 is about the function in the roles, but God makes a completely different comparison. He talks about the one flesh relationship in marriage being like the relationship between Christ and His body. God's talking about the marriage relationship, the part that's hidden. He wants that to be exposed, not for a husband and wife to live like the hidden parts are non-existent. When a woman is forced to live in a fake relationship, her feminine dies. All she's left with is this thing inside her, this little amber glowing seedling that's barely alive because she's not been cultivated and grown. So what we pretend is that we know how to be feminine by acting the way we think or imagine femininity is like. We act in fake femininity because we cannot embody her truthfully. Do you see how the mirroring works here? You end up mirroring fake femininity because he is faking masculinity. That's why you have to heal first. When you become stronger in your real, true femininity, his fake masculinity will not be able to abide what you reflect back. I know that's an old fashioned term, won't be able to abide, but that's exactly what's going to happen because that's how God designed healed femininity to work.